and see if the spirit man hears and obeys, it causes us to have the ability to mature and graduate from the spiritual growth that we need until we're in a place that we can arrive and become in oneness with Christ and oneness with God. Amen? Ha, ah, praise God. In the same turn, understanding what is the results of obedience, we touched on what were the characteristics of obedience. Because it's one thing for me to define obedience to you. Uh, it's another thing for somebody to look up the definition of obedience. But you won't have obedience unless you can recognize what it looks like in the natural in order for you to experience it. So if you're going to experience obedience, there's certain things that you're looking for, all right, in which one of the things that I brought to everybody's attention is that obedience uh, drives us to exercise our faith or conviction. As you become convicted about a thing, it becomes uh, 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 the beginning phases of building you into a place of obedience, Amen? Because that's what conviction is. If there's something that's driving you to do something over and over again or with consistency, then it means you have become obedient to a thing. It's something that, that you do as second nature. Amen? Just like when it comes to the Word of God. If you're a real Bible reader, if you're consistent with that, or if you're a consistent person that prays on a day-to-day -day basis, then what is that other than the characteristics of development of obedience? Amen. The, the second point that I brought out about uh, obedience or its characteristics is uh, it brings us to submit to the thoughts of Christ and righteousness and it also causes us to defeat our vain thoughts which are our thoughts that are of worldliness, have no benefit or blessing to our life's spiritual growth. This is something that our faith being operated begins to nurture the spirit man within. What are we trying to nurture the spirit man within to be other than to be like Christ? To be in the anointed realm of operating in king or queenship and being an ambassador or being in the representation of God in the earth realm. So, see, I can't work my faith unless I have a purpose that I'm working it for. And when I'm working that level of obedience, it brings me to a place that my mind begins to be uh, uh, godly. And if I operate in a godly mind, then now I'm obedient that... I will always think righteously when it comes to decision making versus allowing my, my thoughts to go outside of the will of God and causing myself not to be obedient. Amen? In the same turn, another characteristic that develops obedience in us and begins to manifest is the fact that our obedience uh, uh, vindicates uh, our listening ability. Amen? Because as I said here previously, and dropped it in your hearing, what was the real definition of obedience other than being an active listener? So, if I'm not an active listener, then I'm operating in disobedience, okay? So now, the more that I become active in listening, not only paying attention, but activating what I hear, it causes me now to be more active in hearing and less active in being uh, 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 an inactive listener. Amen? We began to look at that in 2 Corinthians 10.6. All right, because God wants us always to be active in him. All right, and the third characteristic that I brought out was the fact that obedience uh, is learned through righteous suffering. Amen. We found that in Hebrews 5, 8. Uh, believe it or not, really 5, uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 through 9. And when we look at that, when we talk about righteous suffering, the development of obedience comes through us suffering, watch this, for the right thing. Righteous means justified. Alright? So, everything that I'm suffering, 
is not necessarily developing my obedience unless I can look into that thing and see that it's developing my spiritual character to be according to God. When I look at the challenges that I have uh, uh, in regards to my spirituality and I press in and I see myself get through that thing and I see myself on the other side of that thing, that is the experiences that are developing my obedience. That is how it's being learned. That is how it's being uh, morphing into being part of who I am. Then the final characteristic is that obedience is obtained through God's sanctification. Because watch this, when I'm in the place of suffering for the right thing, for the right cause, at the right time, in the right place, in the right will, what God does is the more I desire to do right in my suffering, the more he purifies me. The more he purges me. The more he consecrates me. The more he anoints me. Because in that, I I'm just like David in the 23rd Psalm. I began to press in, into him and say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want everything that I began to go through as I'm still recognizing that I've got a supreme being over me who is God. Then God it becomes sovereign in my life. And now he begins to pull me and said, yeah, you are one of my prized servants. Even though you're going through a valley experience, uh, I'm breathing the breath of the Holy Ghost on you in order to get you through and in the same turn not only am I going to purge you and let you make it through you're going to be developed in obedience and you're going to want to continue to do this for me basically everything that you go through is like Jesus in Gethsemane if everybody remembers this Bible readers before he went to the cross at Calvary before he went to the cross as he prayed, he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. Amen. However, if, for those, if, if you'll allow me to paraphrase, I believe he dipped to the side and saw the other side of the cross. And when he saw the other side of the cross, he was back in eternity and said, Father, let thy will be done. See, obedience now gets us into a place that we say, Father, let thy will be done. It's not my will in the way. My will becomes matched up with yours. See, God has a will for all of us, but some of us don't want to match it up with him in order for him to pull us through because y'all got to understand for somebody that's really hearing me the laws of physics is likes attract likes so if I make my will like God's will then I'm in a place of obedience and God begins to magnetize more to me as I magnetize to him amen praise God praise God so now that brings me up to where we are this evening, and this evening uh, we're on disobedience, amen? Now, for some of you that, that's new to hearing this, I defined disobedience in the last Bible study, and I'm going to define it again. The word disobedience comes from the Greek word parakoe, which is hearing amiss, or to be inattentive, or an inactive listener, amen? Now, as I said this, as a result of disobedience, when we're disactive listeners, meaning we're, we're not attentive, we're not really paying attention, y'all feel what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of times folks done said stuff to you that was right, but you was like, uh-huh, yeah, I'm hearing you, and it like went in one ear and out the other, and you was thinking your own way, that's still disobedience, all right? And what the word says in Romans 5.19 those are the actions that makes you a sinner. All right? Now, for those, for those that's got the word, please turn with me. We'll, 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 we'll run there right quick. Turn with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5, verse 19. Okay? And it says, For as by one man's disobedience... Many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. All right. Now, as I said in the previous study, I said, you know, that yokes itself for what we understand from the word to Adam. Due to Adam's disobedience, we became sinners. 
So by one man's obedience, we're brought back into righteousness, which is an association of Christ. So watch this, all right? So due to the fact of one man's disobedience, we're sinners. So we are birthed into this world according to the first Adam in the sinful nature. So it takes us to chase after the righteous man or the man who is obedient to come into righteousness. Meaning, if I'm going to chase after Christ, I also have to be chasing after obedience. Because it said by one man's obedience were we made righteous. So you can't just chase after Christ without chasing after obedience too. Hello, somebody. That, that might be a deep revelation. But it's one thing to know the man and know the walk of the man. But we also got to desire the characteristics of the man in order to be in right standing with the man's father. So that means I have to not only chase after Christ, but I also got to look and, and, and discern the characteristics of him in obedience and his obedience is an example for me to grab hold of in order for me to be righteous, or i.e. in right standing with God. Without me having obedience, I don't have Christ. Christ was obedience. Hear, hear me. Not only, you know, and this is a deep thing. Not only was he, so let, catch this. That says this. We understand that in John, it says in the beginning was the word, the logos. So we know the real revelation is that Christ is the Logos. Amen. However, not only was he the word, but he even listened to himself as the word. Uh, uh, Y'all didn't, didn't catch that. He had to listen to what he spoke in order for him to still be identified as the righteousness of who he is. So I can't speak his word Unless I'm also obedient to what I speak. Because in my obedience, I now become legal and valid and in right standing with the word that I speak out of my mouth. And if I'm speaking him as the Logos, I can only legally do that out of obedience. Amen. Amen. So, so understanding that, like I said, we have to catch this thing about what disobedience is. Being an inactive listener. Okay, so now, that brings me tonight to defining to you what are the characteristics of disobedience. Because we, we, we've got down to this thing of understanding what are the characteristics of obedience. So you, you somewhat know what it looks like now. You, you can jot this down and say, okay, these are the things I need to look at to be obedient. But now, it's time to check yourself before you wreck yourself. I need to also be able to discern what's in my life that's characteristics of disobedience that I need to delete. I need to remove from my character. Because just as much as I'm operating in disobedience, it's pushing me away from obedience. I need to know what those things look like. Amen. So number one, uh, the first characteristic of disobedience is being the children of the world versus the children of God, which is basically us being in a place of subconsciously denying our godly identity and our ability to hear God. See, when we come into the world, as I said here before, uh, as infants, as children, we begin to be nurtured by the world. The world, however, doesn't have a real desire to nurture you in spiritual things. It's only about, you know, getting you some uh, 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 Gerber bottles and eating baby food and milking you until you get to a place that you can eat real food and getting you integrated into the school system and about you getting a job, learning how to drive a car, learning how to own a house, learning how to have a family. Amen. All of those things have a worldly interpretation to them, but they're, they're not necessarily yoked to spiritual things. The only time you get yoked to spiritual things is when you are introduced to Christ or to the Lord by somebody who's spiritual or you have a revelation that now you begin to press into spiritual things. Amen. So in that, unfortunately, many of us are still in a place that we're children of the world. Amen. And I hate to be a bearer of bad tidings for some folks, but that's the reality of the matter. All of us are in that boat. 
Amen. If you didn't catch that, I, I, I remember as the word Jesus was talking to Peter and he said, uh, Satan is your father. That is the reason why we get engrafted 